It's Thanksgiving morning, and we've got another update to the WiseCam version 2 and Neo Smart Cam installer. I can feel it in your eyes, something's changed. Hey guys, it's Josh from the WL Tech Blog. Today I'm going to introduce the latest installer for these cams, and I'm going to give you a walkthrough on how to use it from the perspective of a Windows user. Now, I'm a Linux user and recently have been using a Mac laptop. I don't actually use Windows anywhere, so excuse me if I'm a little bit fumbly going through it, but I'm taking one for the team here. So I hear what you're saying, but Josh, you already released an installer update and video in November. Well, that's true, and that's been a very popular video, largely because of the Neo shutdown. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, Neos is a company in the UK that was selling a product based on the WiseCam version 2. They used their own cloud service, and on the 19th of November, they shut the whole thing down and left all their customers screwed. As we already supported the Wise and Thingino, it was straightforward to get the Neos branded cameras working as well. I've had a few iterations of my installer, and I've been updating it over time to make the process as simple and reliable as it can be. But when you have thousands of folks flashing their cameras, even a 2% failure rate ends up being quite a few folks. Some of those folks were just not following the instructions, some were having issues with SD cards, and some of them, well we just don't know because users generally aren't set up for doing that kind of diagnostics. Now, of course, we help all the people with issues over on our Discord channel. These cams are nearly impossible to actually break. But our devs were spending more time fixing cams than improving the firmware. And today, I'm presenting the result of much effort from the team. Let's get this cam set up, and I'll tell you more about the changes while it's running. First off, if you're not familiar with Thingino, it's a project producing an open source firmware replacement for ingenic based cameras. It fully replaces the insecure and untrustworthy vendor firmware and puts your data back in your control. Check out this video to learn more about it. Now, as always, you want to make sure you're following the instructions in the README on the repository for the installer. If anything changes in the install process, it'll be reflected there. I don't actually make a new video for every little change. Today, the instructions perfectly match the video. All right, here we are in Windows. We're going to go ahead and download the installer from the repository. The link's down in the description. Here's the README. We're going to click on the zip file here, and it's going to take us to another page. And click the download icon over here on the right. Next, we need to get an SD card ready. Generally speaking, smaller SD cards are more likely to work in your cam than larger ones. I'm using a 32 gigabyte card here. Now make sure you don't have any important files on the SD card before you do this. Our next step is going to be to format the card. So right click, click format, make sure it's set to FAT32, and quick format's fine. Go ahead and click OK, and it's going to erase all the data on that card and get it nice and clean and ready for the installer. Now we're going to go over to the Windows File Manager and into our downloads. You can right click on the zip file that we downloaded, go to Extract All, and then we're going to hit Browse and we're going to select the SD card. Go ahead and hit Start and it'll uncompress to the SD, which should only take a couple of seconds. And when that is done, we're going to go ahead and again, we're going to right click on the SD card and we're going to pick eject. That's going to cleanly unmount it and have it ready to go into the camera. So go ahead and pop her out. For this demonstration, I have the Neos firmware running, but it doesn't matter if it's Neos or Wise firmware. The process and the experience is exactly the same. Make sure the cam is unplugged. Now let's pop in the card. The SD card slot is on the bottom here, and it should click right in. Before we plug the cam in, we need to press the reset button on the bottom. We're actually going to hold it for about five seconds after plugging it in, so make sure you've got your finger positioned right. One, two, three, four, five, and there we go, let go. Now we wait, and the cam will do the rest of the work on its own. It takes about four minutes. Now, while we wait, let me tell you about the differences in this new installer. The previous versions all relied on the excellent WZ Mini Hacks project, 
which is kind of a firmware extension that runs on top of the factory firmware. When the installer ran, it would boot all the way to a working cam before it starting the steps of flashing, and occasionally things would go wrong. Among other things, I've seen instances where a critical process would crash, and it would hit the watchdog timer and reset the camera mid-flash, leaving it in a state where it doesn't work, but also isn't broken enough to go right into the recovery mode. This new version completely bypasses the factory firmware and loads a custom kernel and minimal user land with no other jobs other than to prepare the camera for flashing. I also have all the files you need included in the installer zip, so you don't need to go downloading additional files. And we auto detect which hardware version of the cam you have and we stage the proper firmware. A great new feature is that we're also creating a backup of the factory image, which can be used to restore the camera back to a working state with the vendor software. Now for Neos folks, this isn't really helpful, but we have had a few folks asking about being able to go back to their WISE cloud for whatever reason. And previously, these installs were a one-way street. When the device is manufactured, they actually program unique keys and identifiers for your cam that are required for it to work. So if that seems like something you'd like to have as an option, save that backed up firmware file. After the backup is done, we install our Thingino bootloader, which has a ton of features, including the ability to flash the firmware from SD if a special file name exists. That's how we're gonna finish the process, by renaming the correct firmware file to that special name, which is auto-update-full.bin, then reboot the camera again. The bootloader will see that file, and the complete firmware flash process has begun. Now, if you're following along at home, this is a good time to get your mobile phone out. Go ahead and bring up the Wi-Fi network list, and we'll just keep an eye on it, waiting for the camera's provisioning portal to appear. Go ahead and bring up the Wi-Fi network list, and we'll just keep an eye on it, waiting for the camera's provisioning portal to appear. The network will be Thingino, Dash, and then some letters. Once it appears, we'll go ahead and connect to it, if you're on an Android device, it should automatically take you to the config page. If you're on iOS or you're doing this from a computer, open your web browser and put in the address thingino.local. The network has just appeared on my list, so we'll go ahead and connect to it. And I'm on Android, so it will automatically bring up the configuration page, which you can see here. Now you can put in your desired root password. This is used for logging into the device with the web UI or using SSH. You can change the host name if you like, and this is where you also enter the credentials for your wireless network. So go ahead and punch those in. Make sure you're setting up for a 2.4 gigahertz network. And remember that both the SSID and the password are case sensitive. Once you've got that done, go ahead and hit save credentials. That will take you to a verification page just to make sure that everything looks right. There's a button that says proceed. We'll go ahead and click on that. The camera will now save those settings and restart and it will go ahead and get connected to your local Wi-Fi network. It takes about 30 seconds for the camera to come back up. Now, if your router supports it, you should be able to access the camera using the host name that you saw in the field but we do have a relatively new feature where if the camera is connected to your Wi-Fi network, it'll actually read out your IP address if you tap the button. So we'll give it a few more seconds to get booted up here. And you can see we have flashing blue light and the blue light is done flashing. So we should be ready to go. I'm just gonna tap on the button and see what it has to say. So you can go ahead and type that address into your browser and you'll be brought to the web UI. Again, this uses the username root and the password that you provided when you were at the config portal. Now at this point, you have a fresh Thingino camera. You can see the live video feed on the preview page without sound, or you can use a variety of tools to access and manage the video stream. I'll be covering some of those options in future videos, so stay tuned for that. But if you're not sure where to go, check out TinyCam Pro on Android and Frigate on desktop. Any software that supports the OnVIF protocol should be good to go, and you can access the RTSP stream directly as well. Well, that's gonna wrap up this video. 
As always, I appreciate if you give me a thumbs up, and if this sort of content interests you, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really does help the channel. I've got more content around cameras and Tengino coming up, but also other electronics and tech topics as well. If you like these sorts of projects, you're welcome to join us over at the Hackers Homestead Discord channel, which is also the primary place where the Tengino firmware is discussed and the best place to go if you need support. Questions and comments go below. I do my best to answer everybody. I hope to see you in the next video. All the links are going to be in the video description, so definitely scroll down and check those out. Until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags. If you put me down, put me down gently. Don't break my heart with no sympathy.